Here we go, we're going in. We're starting early. We're starting early. Woo! This is what it looks like in here. And Johnny and Ash are through there. Oh, I've never done this before. Watch. Do you want Periscope? It's like Periscope Inception, is it? Hi. Don't rush the show. So we're going to go in in a minute. I'm a little bit... Uh, this is what all I need. My computer with my sound effects. And that's what the show is. Tonight... John Ronson is coming on tonight, which is very exciting. About half eleven, I think, UK time. That's a lot happening here. We, we have to hot seat, so we have to use that studio. There's Kath. Hi. Uh, are you in Brazil, or are you, are you in Brazil, Philippe Jonathan, 14? There we go, someone's saying fuck you, that's nice. They're quite rude on Periscope. They're quite mean-spirited, some of them. Some of them. Sunny Carolinas. Hey, Sunny Carolinas. Evening, Seb. I had a sleepy weekend. Here we go. We're going in. We're going in. Evening, ladies. I'm Periscoping, by the way, guys, so we can all see... The internet can Mark see cracks. your bum crack. Oh, oh, lovely, lovely arse. Your lovely. Bum crack. Right, they're, they're tidying okay, up the studio. Just uh, so come in again me. anyway. Yeah, I'll come in again. Let me know when I'm in. If you finish early on Thursday, just come down. Well, we, we, yeah, we're we're off there at 10. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll still be on. Are you still on? I was about last night. Okay. It's about an hour and a half. We've got to sneak in. That's a long break. We may get down by the time. Two hours from Tazarazi. Sorry. Well, yeah, just come down. So I like to see his periscope. It's Ash. All right, man, how are you doing again? Enjoy the show. People are listening. Oh, yeah, look. In America and Brazil. Hi, oh, Brazil and America. Does this mean we're officially international? We're officially we're international. Official international. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. See you later. Cheers, Ash. Thank you, mate. See you later on. Where's my thing I've got an eight? Where's that fucking eight? Don't worry about all that. It's fine. Cheers, Ash. Thank you, mate. See you later, man. See you later. Have a good show. The computer, and then I've got a plug. My phone into. I'm off caffeine. Any tea you'd see me drinking tonight will be Red Bush. Uh, we're going to start with a bit of music because that buys me time. Uh, no bed, please. Just give me a second, Periscopers, and I'll be with you. This government is showing, and now you know, floating this idea of coming. Oh, what the? It just seems to be, you know, policy on the food. So I was hoping for something more from yeah. the No. And what's going on here with this? Cameron has defended his friends of the rental of France and promised further measures to tackle tax evasion. George Osborne, Jeremy Corbyn, and Boris Johnson will reveal their returns today. Tributes have been paid to a missing clad uh, who, after a body was found in the river where he disappeared, and was discovered in the river way. Still there, Periscope, is it? You've all gone because I've, I've buggered off. They've been shut on safety grounds, meaning around 7,000 pupils have missed the return to school after the Easter break. Uh, that's a really short idea, by the way. Cambridge okay. have travelled from Mumbai to New Delhi on the second day of their tour of India. William and Kate paid their respect to... This bit's all a little bit frantic. Once we get going, we're in. Right, can charge the phone. Hello, Periscopers! Right, these are, these are the headphones. This is what you're going to be listening through. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Now it's important that everyone here tonight understands. Yes, Kath did write this. As the Queen's representative. Um, I need to get an extension lead. Well, remind me to bring an extension lead tomorrow. No sports. Brighton have moved to within a point of right. the championship's automatic promotion places. They won 2 1 at Nottingham Forest well, after Steve Sidwell scored a stoppage time where. That's the latest. I'm Charlie Max. Late night, Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. 
I'll play. Well, I'm not there we go. To kiss and tell, there we go. And we're in, guys. Yep. Shoes off. Always do it with shoes off. Shoes off and walk off. These get some new shoes, guys. Right, hang on a minute. Just give me two minutes and I'll be with you. Oh, what is going on? Computer. Pros photos. Here we go. Here we go. I've never spent much time in school, but I don't play this plenty. It's true, I hire my body out the bay. Hey, hey, I've gotten burned over Cheryl Teague's blown up for Rocky Welch. But when I wind up in the hay, it's only hay. Hey, hey, I might jump an open drop. Right, are you ready? Hello everyone, hello around the world. Call in, we call you back. We call you back, guys. Now, hang on a minute. Someone, I, I thought so. The microphone wasn't facing the mouth. The microphone wasn't facing the mouth, guys. Evening, Ian Lee, Talk Radio. Busy show tonight at half past 11. We, oh, I see why, because look, this, is, this has gone loose. Hang on a second, this has gone a little bit loose. Hang on. Oh, we've broken it again. Ed, you're going to have to come in and fix it, dude. Hang on. Who'd have thought a brand new studio that would um, uh, would break so quickly? Ed's going to have to come in and fix it. Is he coming in or is he... Uh... No, I'm going to stay here. I ain't, I ain't moving. I ain't moving. Can you fix it for us? Yeah, I can do it. Good lad, you fix it. Uh, While well, that's going on... I'm just going to close the blinds, because I like it a little bit uh, more private. Uh, this is actually going out on the radio. Who'd have, who'd have thunk it? Stay there, Alan. Stay there, Carl. We'll find out if um, Alan... Uh, oh, hang on a second. I can talk to him. Alan! Hi, Ian! You must be a multi-millionaire from now. Fighting off! Well, hang on a minute. You had a thousand pounds that you were going to... Hang, hang All right, 500 quid... That you were going to bet on a horse that was, what, uh, 40 to 1? No, 8 to 1. Well, no, hang on a minute. When you first gave us the odds, and I apologise for shouting, but the, the microphones aren't working. It'll work again. Sorry? Work again. I'll break you in a minute. No, hang on, because this is not facing me. This no, is right. about the studio. Here we go. Here we go. We go. We go. We'll see how we go. It's, no, it's not because it's... Uh, it, because, look, you notice this is moving, you see? You see? Uh, so you, hang on, it was about 40 to 1 when we first spoke. Yeah, it was 12 to 1. All right, and you had 500 quid. Yeah. Right, and it came second. But I didn't have it, he tried, I had it to win. Oh, you twit. You massive twit. Because so, the, when I, while I was that angry, the rain was coming down and it made the ground even softer, which slapped his odds even more from 9 right. to 1 to 8 to 1 joint. So do you with. put 500 quid on... Each uh, uh, for it to win, and, eight to one. and it came in second, mate. Well, hang on, we've got to make sure I'm talking into the right bit. There we go. There we go. I literally, I literally oh, no. didn't get any of. I literally didn't get any of that apart from the. Oh no! When, when was the last time I jumped the last bed? That's the horse. Okay. That's yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but I'm quizzing here. Yeah. But as they were coming to the elbow. Yeah. Him. Right. I'm quite, I'm quite bored of this story. I'm quite bored of this story. And what I want to know is, if you'd have bet it each way, how much would you have won? Well, let's see. It's quarter to the odds first four. Yeah. So it would be two to one. Four hundred and... It would be five hundred and two to one. But it would be a grand. Flipping it. And you, instead you, you um, shot five hundred quid away. Okay, okay, okay. Now don't worry, because remember you had another two hundred and fifty quid that you were going to bet on another horse. That one must have come in, surely. No, it was a follow at the chair. So 
How much money have you lost, Alan? 750. Now, do you remember the little bet that we had where I said, if you, you could have given me that 250 quid, and, and if... I, and I if, said no deal. You said no deal, and I said, if your horse lost, I'd give you 150 quid back. And I still said no deal. You did say no deal, because you're a bit of a, a, a plum. What's the topic for tonight, Ian? No, the topics are, what would you do with Alan Caddick's 750 quid? Online, yes, yes. I could get myself an exercise on because I was in one of the national papers. Baby, baby, baby! What? I was in Saturday Sun. Baby, baby, baby! What for? Being a massive plum? I was riding one of the exercises at Aintree. Hang on a second, Catherine, we might, we've got some old papers out there. Can we see if we've got, it's a long shot, bearing in mind we've... Yeah. Can we say we've got Saturday's Sun out there? It's a long, I saw Friday's papers. There might be some of the Saturdays might be there as well. So you were in... By the way, we'll start the show in a bit. 0844 499 1000. Um, yeah, I'll call you back. Th thank you. Um, call you something. Um, so you, what, were you, what were you in the sun for? Because there was a picture of me riding a wooden horse. Why were you riding a wooden horse, mate? Because I wanted to see what it was like to be a jockey riding a horse. The thing is, though, I don't know if you've noticed, Alan, jockeys tend not to get splinters in their ass. Well, because I'm they're riding, they are riding, anyway. they are, they are riding uh, what can only be described as real horses. Well, I was ten stone overweight anyway. I mean, you would have crushed the horse. No, but hmm. so you've lost, you've basically dropped seven hundred and fifty quid. In an entry. What do you do for a living, Alan? I'm unemployed. There's money from the taxpayer. Hello? <gasps> yeah. Um, OK. And how do you think... That if, we, if we were another radio station, we'd now turn this into um, a hate phone-in against you, and I, that's not what we do here. It would be it, it would be like it'd be Katie Hopkins having a pop saying, Right, phone in at this this I think it's great. Listen, the stuff I the stuff I used to buy with when I was signing on, oh I'm man alive. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Good for you, Alan. And I'm I am happy to oh, I am happy to support your downfall. Thank you, Ian. Absolute pleasure, what buddy. Topics have we got tonight? Tonight's topics are I've written them on oh, they're on my phone. Okay, I'll try and remember them. Guess how much a pack of 12 first-class stamps cost? Well, it, I know one stamp costs 63 pence. Right, so multiply that by 12, what you get? Um, 7 pounds £7.68 for a packet of stamps. I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it. I was in the post office. I said, no, I only want 12. She said, yeah, I know. It's 8 quid for a packet of stamps, Al. Blimey! That's outrageous. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. Oh, wait, 4 4 4 9 9 one thousand. Here's another thing. The Moscow State Circus. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. Is at some point in the near future going to be near me, right? Yeah. I thought I'd take the boys to that. I'd take the boys to see the circus. Yeah. So me and two kids. Yeah. Have a guess how much me and two kids to go to the circus will cost. Well, I think it would be about £15 for an adult, children, five to six. It's the years. Moscow State, it's not Jerry Cottle. Uh, about 35 for an adult, 25 for a child. Yeah. So what would that be in total? Uh, You're good 35, at you. 6, 85 quid? 110 quid. Blimey! 110 quid to go and see the Russian state, the Moscow State Circus. Scandalous. For me and a six-year-old, the four-year-old won't even remember it. Scandalous. It's outrageous! And they're not allowed to have animals in anymore. Oh no! So that's that's another thing. I want to know if I want to know because uh, listen, I, I, I've made the mistake many times. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my career, Alan, was I slagged off Tom Daly's television show Splash, right, without watching it, and then I watched it and it blew my mind because it was brilliant. Yeah. So I want to know if the circus is any good. Well, I don't know. I've never been to see the Moscow State Circus. So I'm in the same boat as you. Third thing, just think you could have afforded to go to that circus seven times with two kids. 
Well, I could probably take me mum and dad for OAP way. Yeah, probably. Third thing. You see how arrogant those lifeguards are? Yeah. I feel I'm losing you a little bit, Alan. Alright, I'm back. And we'll be talking about bums and winkles. Mmm. Yeah, about you know, and I assume calls to air at midnight? Why not? You know what I mean? Get no. Guys, get calling, you know the number? What is it? 0844 Thank you, Alan. Lifeguards, seriously, uh, we went swimming today and um, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Apart from the, oh wait, for, uh, he's right, there's the phone number, we'll give you a call back as well. John Ronson coming on at half eleven. Apart from the arrogance of the lifeguard, they, I mean, and the, the thing about lifeguard, they're kids. They're kids doing it. They've got to be like 19, right? I have never seen a lifeguard save a life. I've never seen it. I don't seriously, and I'm good. All right, I, I could be treading on thin ice here. Who's ever drowned at a public bath? Now, when no, 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 don't find me out and say, "Well, my nana did." Don't do that. But really, this, statistically, I reckon public swimming baths have got to be safer than flying in an aeroplane. They've got to be. They've got to be. I've never seen any trouble. The only trouble I've seen in a swimming bath was when my son puked up. And I, I had to make a decision, an immediate decision. Do I alert the lifeguards? No. I just swished it away. Just swished it away. Because it wasn't solid. It was kind of milky. I just swished it away. And it went. The chlorine eats it all up. That sick in that swimming pool, because of the chlorine, is probably cleaner than um, your face. So, but the, the, they are so... So there's, there's water slides at this swimming pool. Like big slides, right? And they don't open till four. So we got there and we're ready. And then we noticed about 10 to 4, big queue started. Kids started queuing, right? And the lifeguard, he was just pushing kids back. There's a, there's a barrier there. So they couldn't go up the stairs until he said they could. And he's like, oi, you, back. Get back. Get back. I'm thinking, you're about six minutes older than they are. And he's really, get back. And I looked at him with disgust and contempt, to be honest, because I just thought, you what? come on. It's that test, isn't it? It's that experiment they did where they um, put a load of people, the prison test, where they put um, 30 people as prisoners and 30 people as um, prison guards in a prison. And they all, like within three days, they fell into their roles, roles and the prison guards were beating up the prisoners and they had to stop it. Can't remember what it's called. Oh, blood, they're all coming out of the woodwork today. Look, look, look. Um, and it's the same thing. If you give a 19-year-old a bright yellow top and some white shorts and flip-flops, they're going to turn into Hitler. It was incredible. Oh, wait, 44, 499, 1000. And so there's, hang on, I'm just trying to remember. So the lifeguards. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Do we, you are, you are? Bye. Good. Given. Good. Well, good to have that. I'd, I'd do anything to, to get the mother I wanted to have some kind of renaissance because they, <laughs> they were so great. I'm always maybe banging on about them. At the moment, maybe this was the tipping point. You playing water in my eyes. <laughs> That's it. We can let it go. Uh, and the reason we saw them is because we came to see Frank Sidebottom at what, what was London Central Poly. Um, and uh, it was, uh, I, again, I, I was obsessed with Frank. And Frank was one of those things, one of those, those acts, those turns, that, was, that, that divided people. My sister, who's listening now in New Zealand, hated him. Didn't get it at yeah. all and just thought it was childish and ridiculous. Whereas, you know, the people in the know thought he was a genius. Well, he was a genius, I think. He was a genius. He really was. Um, there was a kind of strange, surreal genius to what he did. And I think you'd only... Like, at its, I, I was lucky enough to be in Frank Sidebottom's band, I think, at, at his kind of height, yeah. where... Um, you know, we were we were quite terrible, but we were terrible in this really endearing <laughs> way. Um, people, yeah, people fell in love with us. We were playing in front of like crowds of two thousand, and uh, and and then I think what the problem was uh, was that Frank Chris, who who was like underneath Frank's head, yeah. decided to make the band more mainstream. Thought we can't carry on just being terrible, so taught us all to play properly. And, and we kind of jumped the shark, and that's what killed us. And um, but I was there just before all of that happened, when when we were kind of sort of weird, shambolic, 
oddness. I mean, I, I, maybe some people listening don't don't know what we're talking about with Frank Zaidbotham. Well, yeah, um, it's it's hard. To, well, it's it's hard to describe beyond it was um, a, a brilliant songwriter hiding behind a giant paper mache head and yeah. h- pretending that he wasn't a brilliant songwriter. We would reduce great pompous anthems to kind of stupid parochial songs about living in Timperley in Manchester. And yeah, and, and throughout it all, he wore a big fake head that he never took off. And, and I tell you what, Ian, nothing had... Because uh, sometimes he would keep the head on for, like, hours and hours, even when, when he wasn't on stage. And he was frank. You couldn't call him Chris when he wore the head. He wouldn't respond. That's like being, like, a van at three... Bottom swear. Very drunk Frank Sidebottom swearing. <laughs> Frank being drunk. I certainly remember Chris being drunk. Oh, the wayward side. The love. And he was he was being so charming though. He was hilarious backstage playing like blues songs and stuff. And he went out as Frank. And he was meant to do twenty minutes. Forty five minutes later. Sorry, boss. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go and sit at the edge of the. And there was about twenty people in the audience. And and at one point during the show, one of them got out a ball, and the audience <laughs> split into two teams. And completely in Frank. I remember our bass player was seething because he was quite amused. <laughs> so was... Seeing ten stand-ups in a row, I, I can't think of anything more tedious. Yeah. But there are variety acts that would... I remember seeing a guy called Jimbo, who was this old guy. I don't know if he... He must be dead now. And he would do an act pretty much to silence. And the last three or four minutes was him stood there, just saying nothing, letting it sink in that he'd, he'd failed. And he'd, he'd put on his jacket very slowly, pick up his bag, and he'd just walk out of the venue. And it was, it was so delightful. And there's nothing like that, I don't think. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are acts like that still, but I'm slightly behind. But, yeah, I mean, back in the day, there was Malcolm Hardy, yeah. who would urinate on the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Chris <laughs> Lynham, who, 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 who... Oh, Chris um, Lynham! Chris Lynham! Him, his, his act would, um, yeah. would climax in him sticking a firework yeah, yeah. in his arse and lighting it. <laughs> uh, and then there was that great musical act like John Otway and Wild Willie Barrett, who were kind of quite similar to Frank Sidebottom yeah. in their way. Um, yeah, these are great times. These, these are certainly for me my, my formative years. Like fi- I'd, I'd, I'd just left Cardiff where everything was, was boring in my life and I, and I was in a world of those people. I'll go back in a bit, but the, the film, Frank, was... was, was um, well, it was a massive success, wasn't it? Well, I mean... Or not, was it not? <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't the success, the success that, that the guy who directed its next film was, because he then made uh, Room, which got nominated for all oh, the Oscars. Yes, so yes. I, I sometimes worry that Frank is going to be like a footnote in Room's history. <laughs> but... <laughs> but I really, I really, I mean, you know, people, like, like last night I was walking down the street in New York and somebody came up to me, and, like in the darkness, and recognised me and said Frank was his favourite film. Wow. So there are people out there who feel that way. And it was certainly kind of beloved by, by critics. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Yes. Were you surprised? Because there was a little bit of a backlash from Sidebottom fans who went, yeah, but hang on, he's got an American accent. Because it wasn't actually about Frank Sidebottom, was it? Just look no, like him. And, and you know what? I mean, to be completely honest, uh, if there'd been more of a backlash, I, I wouldn't have been surprised. Because uh, you know, it was a kind of it was a it was a gamble. What what happened with the movie that we took? You know, this kind of fantastic real life beloved person, Frank Sidebottom, with I should say, with Chris's blessing. This yeah. is with Chris's blessing, and and kind of amalgamated him with other outsider. Artists like Daniel Johnston, who's you know great um, bipolar singer-songwriter, yeah. and Captain Beefheart, and we kind of created this kind of fictional outsider artist who was a bit of all of these people. So I can understand why um, you know hardcore side bottom fans might might have seen that as a as a betrayal. But you know what really what made me very happy when when we were writing Frank was realizing that there was this documentary. Being Frank was yeah. also going to be made and so I thought well that's okay like if, if people want the Frank Sidebottom story they'll, they'll get being yeah. Frank and if people want this kind of you know sort of dream type weird surreal sort of dreamscape of a movie then, then they can see our movie and, and the two things can, can live together fine so, um, I, so I think most people were, were fine with it you know obviously a couple of people you know felt it, it, it should be more about Frank yeah of course 
But it's stunning. For those who've not seen it, it's stunning. I, I, I think it's, it's wonderful. And in, funnily enough, I was talking to Steve Sullivan, who's doing the Being Frank documentary. We're emailing each other today. He's got it down now to a, 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 a nifty 11 hours, 18 minutes. <laughs> He's got to sort himself out. I've <laughs> for years. Just finish it. I God, know. Kill, kill your babies and just finish it. John, uh, listen, yeah. I've got to pay some rent. Can I come back to you in a couple of minutes? Is that OK? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Bless you. Thank you very much. This is uh, John Ronson talking to me on Talk Radio. Uh, here's some ads. Across the UK, online oh. and Talk Radio. For those about to talk, we salute you. Isn't he lovely? For the last two years, I've learned. I think Periscope is crashed. I'm quite determined. And I thought I was. And I've learned that I actually like. He's good, isn't he? And we're not talking about shame. I think I've Periscope is I crashed. Um, Even when the kids are out. Yeah, it's it's it's. I've learned. It. There's only 90 people that keeps dropping out. Um, the most important. Thing I hope he enjoys it. I like him so much. Is it? We're not doing the usual life. stuff. To find out more, search for OU yeah. Life Changing Learning. All right, cool. Super made, oh, I could kiss my decorate. You enjoying, it's John? Your clients will be singing your praises. Pick up a tin at your local merchant. Dulux Trade, it's your reputation. Space, it's all around us. An infinite vastness. Extraordinary dimensions beyond the realm of human understanding. We are but tiny specks in this gigantic void. Marvelling at who or what created... Oh, you! Get out the back of my van! Oh, oh and there are your back. Sorry. Hello, everybody. Your load's better off with a Vauxhall Nirvana, the large van with the impressive payload. Visit your Vauxhall retailer for more information. The Brothers Ghoul, tomorrow night from 7 on Talk Radio. We'll get you... Honestly, the man for Del Monte are such a good band. Between tea time and twilight with the legendary Brothers Ghoul. Okay. Destined to become the nation's favourite radio family. Tall tales and telephone trouble with the Brothers Gould. Featuring Johnny Gould and Ash. Get caught in two-way family crossfire. With me, Johnny Gould, and him, Ash. You all right, Bubba? On Talk Radio. It's a brother load of back check. Bravado and banging entertainment. Tomorrow night from 7. On Talk Radio. Keeping it in the family with the Brothers Gould. Late night conversation. Well, losing sleep over. Ian Lee. On air and off the leash. On Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. Honestly. Guys, if you do nothing else, go, go and buy The Man From Del Monte. See, you're very approachable, aren't you? I've been to a couple of your talks and stuff, and you kind of make a point of sort of being there so that people can come and say hello and stuff. Is that... Do, uh, do you find that a bit intimidating? Uh, not intimidating. I mean, I spend most of my life, like all writers, I spend most of my life completely alone. So, so you know, my real life is being totally alone in a room. So it's nice once in a while if I'm going off to do a talk to... You know, put in the extra couple of hours at the end of it to, to meet everybody. Now, I, I saw you uh, recently. You were doing a week of shows at the Soho Theatre, and it was such a joy to see you and Louis Theroux um, oh, you talking. Oh, that, that was a lovely one. It was a lovely one. There was, yeah. at the, the first 20 minutes, there mm. did feel a little bit like you were kind of sussing each other out. I, I, don't, I have no idea how well you know Louis at all, but it, it, it felt a little bit... You, you were both a little bit unsure. Yeah, well, we used to always be compared to each other for years and years, um, like throughout the 90s. Like, I couldn't read any article about anything that I did without being compared to Louis. Louis, sometimes, there'd be articles written about him which didn't come <laughs> where he wasn't compared to me, which is maybe even more annoying. <laughs> uh, and then, um, uh, so there was definitely some competitiveness, and... To the extent that I think a little bit of hostility grew between us, which wouldn't have right. happened if, if we weren't being compared to each other all the time. Um, I used to joke on stage that we were like kind of conjoined twins and that for one of us to grow stronger, the other must die. <laughs> and, uh, and I've never done anything with Louis after all of these years. And, and so then I, I, I decided to do like five nights at the Leicester Square Theatre and I thought, wouldn't it be great to just have, you know, have one of the nights is just a conversation between me and him. And, and so, yeah, I suppose there was a, a slight wariness at the beginning, but, but not for long, right? It ended off everyone moving. Oh, it was, it, 
it was brilliant. It was a joy. You're right. It was Leicester Square, not so, and it, and it was a joy to watch. You know, and it was it was very it was interesting because you you are you are similar in styles. I also think you're similar to um um uh, Nick. Um, my, why has my mind gone blank? Broomfield. Broomfield. Yeah, the three of you. There's when I say similar, I don't mean you know identical, but that you have similarities. The three of you. I think I think there's differences too, though. I think Louis is more interested in being kind of see myself as a kind of representative of normal or righteous society, because I think that brings with it its own problems. So I'm much more interested in kind of being entirely empathetic. And, and this, I, I, you, I, I love Louis stuff, and in fact I watched a whole bunch of things I hadn't seen before in preparation for that Leicester Square mm. show, and I really admired, like, you know, what he did, especially his film about the Westboro Baptist Church, yeah. which I think is absolutely brilliant, like, so empathetic. So I think when Louis does, does that, that's what I love the most, is when he... He, he kind of issues, um, you know, confrontation and instead just goes for, for empathy. Um, but, that, but I'm biased because that's what I like to do. You, sh they, you showed, a, I can't wait for his Scientologist um, uh, documentary to come out, if it ever does, but you showed an interesting clip where he ends up kind of shouting at, at, at a Scientologist, which is kind of unusual for him and for anyone in that position. Yeah, very brave. So basically the Scientologists are kind of filming him, so he starts filming them, and they end up just kind of shouting at each other. And, and yeah, when I did, I, I spent time with the Scientologists for the psychopath test, and, and I made the decision to not be at all confrontational with them uh, to see what would happen in that situation and, you know, what would happen if I'm if I'm kind of with them and I'm not out to, to get them. And, and actually, amazing things happened. They got me into Broadmoor yeah. to meet this guy, Tony, who, who claimed he'd faked madness to escape a prison sentence. And none of that would have happened if I hadn't been nice to the Scientologists. And, yeah. and But, however, you know, Louis got something really interesting in, in sort of prodding the Scientologists. So, so both I think both approaches get something interesting, but, you know... I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy with, with my approach. How did it happen? How did you go from, you know, being the keyboardist in Frank's band and, and managing a band and to, to making documentaries for the TV and then make, writing books and then writing screenplays? It, it seems that I'm missing the, the, the link, the bit in the middle. Actually, I do know what the link is. It was this magazine in Manchester called City Life. Right. And lots of members of um, the Manfred del Monte, as well as Mark Commode, and, and, you know, everybody, they all kind of gravitated towards City Life because it was the only way we could earn any money because there wasn't any money in indie music or papier mache heads. <laughs> yeah. Not that there was that much money in right, for City Life. You get like 40 quid for interviewing a movie star. Um, so I started writing for City Life and it just became obvious that I was better at that. I was better at that than I was at being in a band or managing a band. And, and uh, uh, it came naturally to me, so I sent some City Life stuff down to London, and that got me work with The Guardian, and then that got me, like, a column at Time Out, and then that got me a TV show, and then I started directing documentaries, and that led to the books, yeah. and so on. Well, and how do you, how do you, do you come up with what your next book is going to be? Do you kind of have a, you know, three o'clock in the morning, you wake up and go, ah, oh, I'm going to do Psychopaths, or ah, oh, I'm going to do Shaming, or is it you're just kind of investigating and things sort of come together? Yeah. I, you know, I always remember Adam Curtis, who's like my kind of mentor, the documentary maker, always said to me, like, said to me, don't go for themes, go for stories. Just do stories and something will emerge. So that's what I, that's what I do now. I just sort of look for interesting stories in, in the hope that some kind of eureka moment will, will emerge. Um, so it's never like... With one exception, actually, when I was doing the, men the Ministeric Goats, that mm. was kind of deliberate. Like, I wanted to write about irrational thought in powerful places. And then I just spent ages looking for an appropriate story that would be about that. Yeah. And I, I ended up with the Ministeric Goats. But most of the time, now I'm off, I'm doing stories, and I'm meeting people. And finally, like, I think, oh, that's interesting. I never thought of that. I always want, I always want some kind of mystery. Um, it could either be like a specific mystery. So Russ, good to talk to you, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Let's take one more before we go to a break. Let's go to line two. Two, you're on the wireless. Hi. Hello, Ken. I've seen a picture of you on a giant wooden horse. Oh, sorry, what do you think? I think you are a very brave man. Did it move at all? I mean, obviously it didn't run, but did it rock back and forwards? Yes, it did. Yeah, did you get a sore bottom? I was ten stone overweight. <laughs> oh, oh, bless you. You're, you're a big lad, but well, well done you for having a crack. 
Well, you've got to give it a go, Aintree. You, you've got to give it a go. You listen. You lost. You dropped seven hundred and fifty quid. Did you have yeah. a good time? Had a lovely time. Yeah. And I'm going to go back again next year. Beautiful. And spend your um, your doll money. Well, the taxpayers' money. Yeah, here we go. And good for you. And good for you. We're not. We're not one of those stations that would have a go at you. I think. Listen, if you're on the dole or you're on your job seekers' allowance, whatever they call it these days, and you want to yeah, spend so. it, was it? ESA. What's ESA? Employment Support Allowance. Beautiful. If you're on the ESA and you want to, instead of buying food or clothes or transport to go to job interviews, you want to have a gamble on the horses, good luck to you, buddy. Thank you. And, uh, um, may I leave on one final note? Yes. <laughs> Blimey. Talk Radio, 24 hour radio. There we go, we're in. And entertainment. Talk Radio. We're in. We're talking. Where is space? Um, it's all around us. An I've got so many things on my hot keys, I don't know where they are. Extraordinary had... dimensions beyond the realm of human um, understanding. We are but tiny specks in this gigantic void, marveling at who or what creates. Are oh, you? Get out the back of my van. Ooh, oh, you're out the back of sorry. Van. Your load's better off with a Vauxhall Novano, the large van with the impressive payload. Visit your Vauxhall retailer for more information. What did you do to me? Your name is Bill Pulp. You're an intelligence officer of the CIA. This Friday. Who are you? They stuck your husband in my head. The mission is in the memories. Looking for details that he knew before he was killed. Kevin Costner, Gary Oldman, Tommy Lee Jones, and Gal Gadot. Do you have any idea what's at stake? Don't miss the must-see British movie event. Criminal in Cinemas Friday, rated 15. An extra five billion pounds is to be set aside by banks for missold PPI. If you haven't claimed already, claim now. Don't have the time or worried you've lost paperwork? Let PPI claim no bed, please. Do it all for you. We can check whether you've had PPI, and if you haven't, it won't cost you a penny. We've won £337 million for our customers. Text PPI to 80039. I had an Italian boyfriend then. I was young and cruel and I would send him away. I would offend him, I'd say, Miguel, 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 Lasha, May. But now... Can't get that, high. I lost a lot of my stuff on here, I'm afraid, because I was trying to transfer stuff between two hard drives, and I lost shitloads. I've got about 15,000 stuff, but I've not... I, I've not got... Well, I, I've not... I've not... I've not... Direct debit, subject to status, upfront tampon standard setup, minimum contract, and further terms apply. Did your husband accidentally transfer the contents of your joint account to a Nigerian... I'm so hungry! Trust me, good man. Perhaps you bought diet pills on the internet that made you frightened to cough. Or maybe your exotic mail-order bride turned out to be a Ukrainian pig farmer called Igor. When the con is on, you need a man who's on it. Listen to the Radio Hustle with scam-busting supremo Alexis Conrad and get the inside track on all the latest swindles, schemes, tricks and traps the fraudsters are oh, you using can't see their number, can you? your cash. Get tipped off, not ripped da -dum, da -dum, off. With Alexis Conran, enemy of the Had an Italian boyfriend. Saturday afternoon from one on Talk Radio. Late night, Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. I had an Italian boyfriend then. I was young and cruel when I sent him away. I would offend him. I'd say Miguel, 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 Lasha, me. Of an Italian boyfriend, he followed me from room to room. Oh man, so, the man from Del Monte, seriously, I've got it, you haven't. I'd say Miguel and Miguel and Miguel and Here we go. But now, but now, but now, but now, I'm going with a girl from Lancashire. I want to learn the native language here. Who can teach me to translate? Lashamay, 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 
Oh man alive, oh man alive, the man from Del Monte, dear listeners, you don't know what you were missing. Where were you at the, um, the well, what was that club, the, um, the borderline, the borderline, man, 0844. 499-1000 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. We never got round to talking. You can talk about the stuff that we've talked about. You can talk about John Ronson or you can come on and, you know, fart down the phone if you want. Literally do whatever you want. We never got round to talking. By the way, Periscope, I think, has been knackered this evening. It keeps crashing on you guys. I can only apologise, but it's nothing to do with me. Um, eight quid for a, for a, a, a box of, uh, what did it call? No, hang on, let me rephrase that. <clears throat> eight quid for a book of stamps. Eight quid for a book of stamps. I mean, it's, uh, yes, I suppose, really, it's incredible that for 67 pence you can send a letter from here to um, God knows where. But it, uh, it, it struck me. I, I remember, <clears throat> I, I mean, I haven't bought an individual stamp for years, like buying an individual cigarette. I remember... When first class was like 23 pence or something. And how? What, what's the difference between first class and second class, really? 0844 499 1000 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Bad news for blind people. As if being blind wasn't bad enough. You're never going to guess who's doing their braille, who's, who's writing their braille for them. You're never going to guess it. Pedophiles, that's who paedophiles paedophiles so the, the blind people will be touching the braille that's been touched by a paedophile pedo jail bra <clears throat> pedo jail braille fail is the headline in the um, in the sun it's the actual headline 0844 499 1000 pedo jail braille fail oh we're on talk radio now I wonder if um, Porn for the Blind is still a functioning um, website. Hang on a second. Blind.org, I think it was. Porn for the Blind. What it was, it was um, some people, some very kind-hearted, generous people would... I think they might have taken the website down, actually. Let me have a look. Hang on. For the Blind. Um, some very kind-hearted, generous people... There we go. Pornforthebind.org um, would record audio descriptions of pornography for blind people I, I, and I'm aware I can play this because I'm aware I've got a dump button and I'm aware that it's got a dump button and we can we can see how this goes they would um, watch pornographic scenes and describe them audio descriptions so that blind people could um... big sausage pizza I'm going to click on there's there's hundreds of these things um, um, let's you know here we go. Porn for the Blind presents Big Sausage Pizza. Okay. This is a 35 second preview clip located at HTTP colon... Okay, we don't, we don't need to know the exact location of where that pornography is, but it's on the Big internet. Okay. Okay. Oh, Big Sausage Pizza dot com dot PHP question mark NATS equals MTM Okay. Z -O get, to the, get to the raunchy bit. Get to the raunchy bit. I don't want to hear the, the intricacies. Comma zero, comma zero, comma zero. Now he's got a... Ampersand Qualify. He's got a sexy voice, so this is going to be very, very erotic. Here we go. Big Sausage Pizza. The page's main banner displays a large kielbasa layered over a thin crust pepperoni pizza. <laughs> okay. Multiple taglines read, where every pizza includes a big sausage. There we go. Nice. Every Fun. pizza comes with a big tasty sausage, okay. whether you ordered it or not. I think sausage, I think sausage means penis, okay, but we we'll deliver. see. Scrolling down the page, Get to the pictures clip. of various girls are shown reacting to the delivery man who is sitting on the couch giving a thumbs up to the camera. <laughs> there is an open pizza box on his lap. Yep. And his penis is protruding from a hole in the center of the Okay, I think, and, and, and on it goes, and on it goes. And I think we, um, just, just, uh... One is bent over so There we go, I, I think we get, um... And, um... Massaging the penis. Okay, but I think we, I think we get the idea of it. Dear me. And, 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 and the thing is, though... For visually, people who have got sight, eyesight, we're used to being able to look at this stuff and, and, and finding this stuff. And for, for people who are visually impaired, that stuff isn't there. So I say, how do I delete my um, browser history? That's what I say. How do I delete my internet searching history? Just in case. Can't be too careful these days. Anyway, 
Pedo Jail Braille Fail. Pedophiles are being paid to translate children's books into Braille in prison. Sex offenders and other cons get up to £18 per week while inside to convert text. But critics last night, oh eight four 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 nine nine one thousand by the way, but critics last night blasted the scheme as inappropriate. David Spencer, how do you translate into Braille? Is it, um, I never understood in court, right, is it, is the stenographer, is it the stenographer, is that the word? Yeah, that's, that's weird. They don't have a typewriter, they have a weird typewriter that's got about, I've never seen one close up, 12 keys? Less than that, 8 keys. Probably less letters and more sounds that it Sounds? Like, what do you mean know, sounds? Like, you know, instead of Ooh. S and an H, there'd be a button for sh on, on the key, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Okay, well, we've got shoot. How does that work? This, the, the court is a mystery to me. It won't be for much longer, but it's a mystery to me. Um, the, the courtroom artist and the stenographer just typing away. Because they, they type quickly, man. How does that work? Hang on, maybe line, line one. Do you know how stenographers work? Hello? Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Ian. How you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused by stenographers. Stenographers? Stenographers. Stenographers. I haven't got a clue what that is, mate. It's the people that type in um, courtrooms, but they don't. They use a special typewriter. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how it works, though. OK, great, that's great. What have you got for us? Uh, John Ronson. Yes. Just want to... Did you ever listen to his documentary he did on Radio 4? Um, which one? He did a, it was called John Ronson On, and it was a different story every week. I heard some of them, and I've not heard all of them. And I, You reminded me that I did start working, they're all on YouTube. I started working yeah, through them on YouTube, uh, and I didn't, I didn't continue, so I shall do that. Thank you. All of the MP3s are on his website as well. Oh, are they? What, can you download them? Yeah, he's got them all on his website. You can down, download them all. I'm going to do that now. Brilliant. All right, nice one. But, um, did you, have you ever heard of a band called The Shags? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby! Don't, now, uh, this is where my computer is going to let me down. Hang on one second. Have I got... <laughs> stay there. Have I got The Shags on... Uh, do you know, I was, I was um, fingering my Shag CD the other day thinking, oh, I should really take that in, but um, I, haven't got, I haven't got The Shags on here, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the ones I, that had never heard music before. Y yeah, go on. Yeah, that's the one. Go on, you explain it the, for everyone else. Their dad basically wanted them to be pop stars. Uh, they, I think there were three girls, and he basically locked them in a room and told them to write songs, and they hadn't even listened to music. They didn't know about music. They didn't have a clue. So basically it's the sound of three girls just creating music from nothing. <laughs> but it's... And, it's 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 beautiful. When I say beautiful, beautiful is you can stretch the word beautiful sometimes to different have different meanings. It's it's certainly unique. Yeah. The other place I worked, the last place I worked at, right, was a BBC local radio station, and I would quite often I would play the Shags on there, over over Wally Webb, who was this this uh, uh, gentleman who was on before me, and it was quite old fashioned radio, and he go. Right, well, now coming up, we've got uh, Paul McCartney and Jet, and then I play the sh I'd go, I'd go into the Shags until 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 he complained, rightfully so, actually, rightfully so. Um, now, my internet, the, the, the internet's all to cop today because I'm trying to play the Shags, and it's um, it's um, hang on a minute, let's try and play My Pal Foot Foot by uh, the, the the Shags. He, yeah, he interviewed them. Well, obviously now as they are, didn't he? Yes, yes, he did on one of his shows. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not. Apparently, Kurt Cobain was a big fan of the Shags as well. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. It, I mean, it's a fan is probably stretching it a little bit. I don't know why the internet is is is, is playing up. Hang on, let's try Philosophy of the World. That's the one I remember as being the hit. Um, come on, internet, do as do my bidding. Here we go. Here we go. The Shags. And isn't it true? Today it fits into this. They're singing about David Cameron. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Frank Zappa rated the Shags as the third best band in history. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, thank you very much. What was your name? Wayne. Wayne, thank you for that, Wayne. I appreciate rem the reminding of the Shags. Yes, it's a, an actual band. How the hell did they not set the world alight with that? Speaking of setting the world alight, it's uh, everyone's favourite arsonist, Line 2. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you, buddy. What you got for us, Dennis? They sound as though they shagged out that lot. Yeah, exactly. They've been rocking hard in the free world. Oh. Yeah, there we go. They've never heard music before, and then they come out with that. Stenographers. Put, Turn your radio off, Dennis. Uh, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> Steady. No, a stenographer's only typing just like they do with shorthand. But, it's a shorthand yeah, machine. No, a shorthand machine. So they're typing the shorthand symbols. Yeah, well, they, they used to do it just with a pencil, didn't they? Right oh, well, my mum used Pitman 2000. My mum, I used to have to test my mum on her shorthand when she was learning it. Well, these days, they use a little machine to do the same job. Use your finger like everybody else. No, you don't know where the finger's been. Thank you very much indeed. Well, if you'd rather use your dictaphone, then of course you can do. 0844 499 1000. Greetings, Berklings. We come in peace. We wish to communicate with your leader. I'm Howard Hughes. Join me for something up from 10 for a trip into the outer limits. I hope you liked it. Radio specimen jar of the psychic, the supernatural, and the simply unexplained. The unexplained with Howard Hughes. Yay! Earth time on Talk Radio. The Wild Man of Late Night Radio is back. Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making talk. My bed. You can never be any god. Anyway, and, and on and on it goes. Can I play you something that a friend of mine sent me? Go on. Um, let me type in YouTube. Katy Perry, Dad, um, Devil Child. There we go. Right. Now, our Her parents are really religious. Yes, they are. Right. And here's a clip of a mum. I've not seen her new video for a song called E.T. And apparently, she has sex with, like, an alien in it. Right. Right. Um, and it, listen to it, my friends, this is fa I, I found this absolutely fascinating, this um, clip, if it plays. Here we go. Mr. and Mrs. Hudson. Yeah. Can, can you You're the daughter of Katy Perry. Mum and Dad. So it's a, there's a man pushing this, this woman's got a camera, and this man's pushing it away. You're one of the most you, wicked you're people. Trespassing. You're trespassing. She is a satanic That's not her, that's not Katy Perry's dad. Please, he help. comes in. Right, and you please. claim to have a ministry? Right, here comes Katy Perry's you dad, right? to have a ministry. Right, that's it. That's then it, Dad. minister to your daughter, because that is needed more than ever. Okay. You okay. ought to know better. When you have a girl that walks with Satan Are the way she know? does, did you see her latest you video? Kids, kids? I do, and I have no relationship with my son Boom. because he is... Oh, no. oh, the internet. Damn you, internet. It, why and there's what? the nub of it. Well, I don't know why it's running so slowly. We'll try a is bit. Because you went to that site that described. Yeah, Born for yeah. the Blind. I'm going to close everything else on here. Look, so let's see if it will. Um... I heard a bit of that and I just kept thinking, I quite fancy a pizza. Yeah, exactly. I'm really hungry. Here we go. Here we go. Here. She does. Did you see her latest video? You got kids? I do. And I have no relationship with my son because he is walking away from the Lord okay, and he so exploits before it. Before you point your finger at me, why don't you point your finger at because me? Because I. Oh, the blooming internet. What is wrong with this place? Thing is, she's got a point. Why? She's got a point. Mm. Right. S supposedly a really... And I, got this, I have the same issue with Beyonce. Beyonce is supposedly a Christian, right? But I've seen, I've seen her shows, right? Um, it's, it's flipping... It's soft porn, man. I've been to a couple of Beyonce concerts. It's soft porn. Hang on, it, it, it carries on. Called Tough Love. My son is playing on the road and I discipline you allow Katy Perry no, to play on the highway, and she is anything. taking you to hell right along with her, including millions of young women Boom. and young there. men who are listening to her videos. I have nothing to do with that. Yes, you do, because you just said, and I just watched your program. You just said. You think you're acting like a Christian right now? Yes, I am, because I am rebuking you because my kid watches your kid's videos, there. There. and it's sending him to hell. No. Because
because of the choice he made because of your daughter and your lack of discernment and direction. Right, that bit's a bit wrong. Because you, 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 the, the choices he made are ultimately his choices mm -hmm. and he's responsible for his actions, the, yeah. the son that she's talking and about. And people were shouting but, the same stuff about Elvis. But... Oh, come on, they Catherine. They come were. on. Come on. All right. I'm Don't shoot from the waist down because that's going to pervert people. Oh, yeah, but Elvis wasn't having sex with aliens in the video. I haven't seen the video. Have all right. It? Well, no. Let's all right. Well, all right. Fine. We'll get the video then if you want to do that. I think her argument is flawed because we all have a responsibility for our own actions unless, of course, we are mentally ill. And I have to say, do you know what? It does worry me about the sort of pornification You've of this two, generation. You've got two little girls. Yeah, it does. But that's my responsibility as a parent to guide them in the right direction, isn't it? There are these influences out there, but there are plenty of influences that I don't approve of. But, you know, you give them a, st oh. a solid foundation and hope they make the right choices. Right, it features Kanye West. So already yeah. I'm I'm thinking flipping it. I don't, I don't, we don't want to hear the song, right? And it's just because we'll hear it's like the first couple of bars of the song. Um, I, oh, the internet's been really, really slow. That's an advert. I don't want to play that advert. We can skip the advert. Has anyone ever watched an advert right through to the end on YouTube? When okay. you have the option of shift, skipping, no. Okay, so this is Katy Perry's video, E.T. It's five years old, right? Oh, well then I've seen it. Well, I've not seen it. So she has sex with an alien in it? Not really. Yeah. What do you mean, not really? I'm going to skip forward a bit. I'm going to get to the wrong shit. It, it's just... Oh, shut up, you muppet. There we go, right, she's floating in space. There's an alien, right? Yeah. Is she, or is she not, going to have it away with that? I don't remember. Is that E.T.? That's not... That's, no, look, they made it look as much like E.T. as they can without being sued by Steven Spielberg. Which songwriter, one of America's greatest songwriters, wrote a song based on the E.T. theme? It's one of his last hits. He's still alive and was sued by Steven Spielberg. Shaggy. Nope. Shut up, man. At the time the film came out. All right, she's dressed up as a... Um, a so she's an alien. That's OK, then. Yeah, no, she's... Well... They're both aliens. That's she's okay. dressed up as an intergalactic sexual goddess. Yeah, so she's an alien. Right. Um, oh, wait, 444991000. One thousand. She's floating around really in space. This is actually a good song. I bet it's not. It is. I like fireworks. <laughs> no, it's a good song. Um, she's all like... She's cause copy, she, OK, so she's copying Bjork and Lady Gaga. There's a cockatoo. Which are, I like a cockatoo. Anyway, I don't, I don't, anyway. There's nothing I've seen there. Oh, you. You need to get life. There we go. There's a lizard. There we go. There we go. She's having sex. No, she's, she's not. having, she's totally having sex. She's not. You saw her toes clench. That. <laughs> Who <laughs> clenches their toes? Maybe that's how aliens reproduce. Hang on, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There's a robot. She's going to um, have it away. She's going to have it away with a robot she's in a not. junkyard. She's not. Yeah, she is. She's wiping its balls. <laughs> she's not. That's an alien. That is a robot. She is engaged in carnal activity. There we go. With the robot. No, she's not. There we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. She's just looking in his eyes. There we go. How many eyes has he got? There we go. Three. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's nothing going on. There we go. There's nothing going on. There we go. No. They're gonna put, he's going to put, put on some designer sunglasses. Unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, what a load of nonsense. Really? Come on. She was right. No, she wasn't. The mother... The, I'm not being ridiculous. Yeah, you are. She was being more ridiculous, but you're being ridiculous. Look, they're naked. Look, they're naked and she's got a tail in a junkyard. She's an alien. Flipping egg. The thing is, right, and this is... And I'm being serious when I say... I do think that mum had a really good point. That the, the pop industry... Katie Perry's 30. <laughs> So dad's supposed to smack her bum and send her to bed. You couldn't smack that. You get you, you get caught on the tail. <laughs> the thing is, right, the thing is... <coughs> hang on, line, line one, you agree with me, don't you? You made it a bit difficult for a phone-in straight to air with this topic, Mike. Well, no, no, because you... No, I'm not. I made it easy. I've given you a topic when I don't need to. I can just sit here and wait for the calls. Well, I was going to talk about guests you could have on, but... Go on. If he's a minister... Yeah. If she's not actually an... In his church anymore, which I presume she's an adult and living her life now. Yeah. Then he, he can hope that she gets saved in his religion. He doesn't think she's doing anything wrong. Well, has he said that? Yeah. He didn't what? say that. He said it in that thing. He said he doesn't think she's doing anything wrong. Beyonce's same. dad was her manager. <laughs> Have you seen the film? Do you know what? The video for Crazy in Love, mm -hmm. flipping it. The first time I watched that, well, oh... Dearie me, you don't want to know. 
<laughs> seriously. I could not believe what I was watching. But they're, they're all like that. I'm not saying that that's right. But you love, you love your children. You don't necessarily love what they do with exactly. their life. Exactly. But she was right. But that, that mum was right to say that Katy Perry and pop videos are... They are they are sexualising our children, yeah, they are. and they are. Do you know what? I'm going to say it. I think they're part of the downfall of, of modern civilization. Yeah, Seriously. That leads, that leads with her, not her father. Her father probably doesn't approve of the videos either. He loves them. No, he doesn't. Oh, no. my dad would be flipping mortified. Well, your that's your dad. Katie Katy Perry's dad thinks they're all right. I wouldn't be happy with my daughter getting into the pop industry like that. I wouldn't. I, what what is wrong? We just know my daughter. How old's your daughter? Is she? I mean, is she going to be? A, she's fifteen. Yeah. Does she want to be a pop? They all want to be pop stars mm. these days. Does she want to? Uh, she, nah, she's more into cosplay and. Uh, cosplay. Flipping uh, yeah. egg. But she won't do the tarty cosplay. She's uh, very strict on that. Okay, well that's good. Okay, and, and, okay. Why is she into cosplay? That's a weird thing for a fifteen-year-old girl in Wales to be into. Well, I was into science fiction and all that when yeah. I was a kid, yeah. and there was nothing around for me. But I like showing her all science fiction and comics, and she got into it. And with the internet, it's great. She's got local what's, friends. She's got international friends. What's that new film that's just come out this week? Midnight Express or something? Well, it's, no. What? What? That was the uh, huh? the, the comedy. Wasn't it? Midnight Express. No, you're thinking of Midnight Run with um, um, Robert De Niro. And oh, that bloke. Was, it's got one of my favourite. <laughs> yes, yeah, one of my favourite. It's such a funny film. It's one of those yeah. films. It's full of swears, but they show it on five uh, five forty five on a Saturday afternoon, and it will be mother fluffer and stuff like that. <laughs> it's got one, one, one of my favourite lines it's with. The um, last good uh, Robert De Niro films, to be honest. Yeah, it was one of the last. Charles Grodin, right? Is this 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 con oh, yeah. man? And Charles Grodin, is, Robert De Niro is a bounty hunter. He's got to get him all the way across the other side of America, right? And Charles Grodin says, um, he says, right, we're going to go on a plane. He goes, I can't go on a plane. What's the what's the fear of flying? Yeah, he uses that thing. Right. He, he says he says I've got whatever it is phobia. He says you're gonna have fistophobia in a minute if you don't get. <laughs> and it's just delivered. So you're gonna have fistophobia in a minute. It's such a good film, right? Do you know, what? I'm gonna order. I bet I can get that for tuppence on here. I'm gonna order Midnight Rum. Yeah, he plays a doctor in the uh, Louis C.K. films, doesn't he? That he does what? He plays a doctor in the Louis C.K. program, Louis. I'm not watched uh, what Charles Grodin does. Yeah, he's uh, like he lives in the house in the, in the apartment block. He's oh, I've not watched house. that program. Is it any good? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's it's you know it's like really good. Midnight Run, DVD, thirty four pence. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah, we've watched stamps in about six years. Hey, we brought it back round. Go on. Because I get so much stuff off eBay. Yeah. And they, because they come in strange packets, the post office don't stamp the pass, uh, so don't stamp oh, the stamps. Hang on a minute, yeah, go on. So I cut them out. Oh. Everything I've sent, even if it's like a single letter, has a second class large packet stamp on it that I've just recycled. Hey, that's flipping Brit. I mean, it's illegal, and obviously we don't condone yeah. it. Of course, of course, yeah. of course we don't condone it, and I will be reporting you to the authorities. Uh, but I never thought of that. Sometimes the postman scribbles with pen. If they haven't postmarked it, he yeah. knows your game. But no, what's the pen mark on a single stamp? Beautiful, you know? hey mate, that's fantastic. You, oh, I. quick. <laughs> 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 you're, oh, thank you for that tip. I don't think I got your name, fella. Craig. Craig, thank you, Craig. I appreciate that. No worries, but I was going to say, get guessing. I was already going to say Charlie Brooker, but he's on now. Charlie Brooker. Yes, yeah, someone tweeted me and Charlie Brooker. And be careful playing that game, guys, because I've also been it, started conversations with people I don't want to book. Yeah. Um, I only want to get people that I really like. And someone tweeted me and Charlie Brooker saying, you should get Charlie Brooker on. And I messaged yeah. him, and he said, yeah, I'll be up for that. So um, let, let's see what happens. Go on, who else? Well, Josie Long, I know you've had on before. Josie Long's a good one, actually. Are you aware of Josie Long's yeah. work? She's very, very funny. Yeah. I remember she came in um, to Absolute once when I was there, and uh, she brought her sister in, who was a drunk hairdresser. <laughs> she wasn't, like, drunk all the time, but she was drunk, and she just won an award at the International Hairdressing For Awards. drunk hairdressing? For drunk hairdressing. I've just ordered... Um, uh, midnight Run. Look, I'm terrible, me. Uh, uh, yeah, Josie Long's an excellent idea, actually. Uh, Emma Kennedy. Do you know her? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's well, been really nice about me online, Emma Kennedy. She's been very oh, nice. Yeah, about... yeah. When you had the controversy. Yeah. The con yes, the <laughs> controversy. One. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the incident. <laughs> Catelyn Moran as well. Yeah, I don't know a lot about Catelyn oh, Moran. Oh, I love Catelyn Moran. You should interview uh, her then. Mm, you get her on an interview. No, because you know, I like her too much. 
If it's awful, I'll, I'll hate myself. Oh, well, she's good on anything. You watch anything she's on, and she's just there. You know, it's just brilliant. Yeah, I don't. I don't know a lot about her. I'll have to. I, 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 a couple of people have suggested people that I don't know a lot about, and I'm looking into. Hey, actually, Craig, have you read her book, How to Be a Woman? I've got it on audio book. You need to listen. To, to you need to listen to it because it will open your eyes to what your daughter's going through. Oh, I know, and I've seen her new video where she's. Uh, you see, because she's got a new book, yeah. uh, Morgan. Oh, so must have been. Manifesto. Yeah, yeah, and she's got like four or five YouTube videos up about that, and one of them to the to uh, women, to girls that come to see her. Yeah. Oh, it's just amazing. Yeah, I I, I sort of got it for my daughter to to listen to, but like you know. You have a listen to it as well. Honestly, oh. you, you won't regret it. Yeah, yeah, and I've got the other book as well, the uh, the Times column one she did as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's all, all audio books. I'm too lazy to read. <laughs> <laughs> I can never... Craig, listen, I've got to go because I'm so late for a break. Yeah. Um, uh, but listen, nice to talk to you, mate. I can never um, get by with audio books. Uh, the, uh, the, the only one I ever got by with was um, when I was eight, and it was um, Batman. And it was... Um, um, who's the guy that had a big... Um, what's it? Not Errol Flynn, the other one. Roddy McDowell. Did he? Yeah, yeah. Didn't know about oh, that. Roddy McDowell. My mum had a cactus called Errol Flynn. There we go, you see. Massive. And the only bit I remember from it was, um, uh, he was talking about the Joker playing some music, and he went, and the Joker's music went, boom shakalaka laka boom shakalaka laka boom shakalaka laka boom Across the UK, <laughs> online and on DAV. A radio star is... Yeah, Roddy McDowell, that's his top. Yeah. Yeah. radio. Good morning, baby. The treetop. This Motorola baby monitor's had a price drop. God, Down God. from 50 to 25 pounds. It's got a two way talk feature and a high sensitivity microphone to hear every sound. I've got one in better. the boot of my car. It's I buy two and I put one in the boot of the car. Landlords, you can get landlord insurance with direct line for direct line for just 120 pounds. Can your insurance do that? 10% of customers pay this or less due to December 2015. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. What did you do to me? There's not many people on periscopes, like, it keeps crashing. Um, not my fault, theirs is the periscope. Who are you? That's why my video is not crashing. Oh, really? The mission is in the memories. Looking for details that he knew before he was killed. Sorry, guys, not been giving you much uh, periscope love. Do you have any idea what's at stake? Don't miss the must-see British movie event. Criminal in Cinemas Friday, rated 15. When a punter takes the tumble as a fool, it won't make the blindest bit of difference to my walls. No red wine marks, no craft beer stains, with diamond paint, oh, what you got to train. Oh. My pub stays as pristine as the day it was painted. La, 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 with new stain repellent technology in diamond paints by Dulux Trade, liquid stains become droplets that just wipe clean without scrubbing. Use it and your clients will be singing your praises. Anyway, Pick up I'm a tin at your local phones. merchant. Huh? Dulux Trade is your reputation. The <laughs> Brothers Goo yeah. on Talk Radio. Yeah. Right. We'll get you talking. Yeah. Two yeah. brothers separated at birth. Why are you telling me this in the real world? Apart uh, on the opposite sides of broadcasting. It's all that. One is a well-mannered, sharp-dressed, dot-com billionaire. The Stilton's awfully nice. The other is a down-on-his-luck radio producer who makes Columbo look like George Clooney. Just one more thing. Suspend your disbelief. The Brothers Gould are here. Poor art, man. Oh, do stop it, Ash. The Brothers Gould, featuring Johnny Gould and Ash. Tonight from 7 on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. Uncut after hours conversation for the up all night generation. Late night, Ian Lee on Talk Radio. We have ways of making you talk. Uh, line one, you're on the wireless. Hello? Oh, let me try to... Uh, yeah, line two. Nope, Chipping Norton, try again, Chipping Norton. Try again, Chipping Norton. Try again, Chipping Norton. Uh, Ian Lee, Talk Radio, 0844 499 1000. Calls cost seven pence a minute, plus your provider's access charge. Significantly more from mobile phones, guys. Um, don't forget, you can download a best of podcast every day as well if you want. John Ronson's in that podcast, is he? Yeah, yeah. I love John Ronson. The yeah. Whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Pedo jail brail fell. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, what else is in the papers? There's not a lot in the papers today, actually. They're a little bit dry. Um, 
Oh, oh, no, I tell you what's, oh, I tell you what's in the papers, the answer to what's wrong with this flipping country. What's wrong with the world? Not this country. What's wrong with the world? Is it Beyonce or Katy Perry now? No, I'll tell you exactly what it is. And this is, no, but don't do that face because it annoys me because this is genuine. This is genuinely what's wrong with the world. The Daily Mirror. Gonna open it up. Fitness for work staff mock the disabled. Oh. No, 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 I'm not, this this isn't even what's wrong with the world. Right? Assessors brag on film of cashing in. A fitness for work assessor for government contractor Capita boasted he flew through vital welfare disability tests, earning himself 20 grand a month. And another derided disabled claimant as needing help to wipe her ass because she's too flipping fat to do it herself. This is for a Channel 4 programme, right? Gets a tiny, tiny little bit on page two. Mm-hmm. Whereas page, no, one, no one reads the left, the left um, page, the even numbers. This is why... Um, the story, they will hide stories away or apologies yeah. on the left hand side because no one reads it. Your eyes are always drawn to the right hand side, okay? So if you look at that, so the thing about disabled people being mocked by the assessors, tiny thing, yeah. page three, it's all about Britain's Got Talent. That's what's wrong with this country, not the country, the world. That's what's wrong with the world. Wherever he goes on the world, Alex Magala lives life on a knife edge. The Brit- so it's a man who can swallow swords is a whole page three. And the fact that disabled people are being mocked when they go and apply for benefits and stuff is a tiny, it's, it's a third of a page, on the left hand page that no one reads. That's what's wrong with this world, is that we consider that the fact that a muscular bloke can swallow a sword. Fair play, it's impressive. He's put a, 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 a nail in his nose, he's hit with a block of wood. It's impressive. But it's page three, the whole of the page is an advert for a multi-millionaire's television show, right? The fact that disabled people, people are laughing at them because they're disabled and they can't wipe, can't wipe their own backsides, which actually they can't, some of them, and this woman perhaps can't, gets a third of a page on a page that no one reads. I was looking at this and I, and I was staring at what's wrong? It's outrageous. But who's made that decision? Is it the people who were buying it? Who have made no, that happen. no, it's not because they're giving us what we want. Aren't no, they? they're not giving us what we want. They're not giving us what we want. When we worked at BBC Local Radio, yeah. were we giving people what they wanted? We no. might have been, but the the, the the whole of BBC Local Radio wasn't. Mm. It was what the suits thought people wanted. Right. But we know for a fact, right, that people, you dear listener, are way more intelligent than the Muppets that run BBC Local Radio, right? Think. Way more intelligent. And I have to believe that the same applies for papers. If you, you know, we've got the Daily Star if you want that kind of stuff. We're more intelligent. I we want more than mirror. that. I am surprised at the mirror. Because it's supposed to be socialist paper. We deserve better than this. And the thing is, right, I've been, I've been on David Light's website too long. That we just accept it. We accept it. And we know from working in radio, right, where the, where the boss has said, you've got to tone it down, you've got to dumb it down. I didn't use the phrase dumb it down, but you've got to make it the safest possible thing you can do, right? That's so why I got the boot. Yeah. Because it wasn't safe. I was going to say, not here, they've not, but we've No, not before. here. People, people don't get it, they said. Yeah, exactly. And it really annoys me. It, genuinely, I saw this earlier on, and I got so peed off about it. Hang on a second. Line two, you're on the wireless. Hello, Ian. Yeah, you're on the air. Um, my name is. Yeah, my name's Marty, and I'm calling from Madison, Wisconsin. Are you really? I'm a par- Yeah, I'm a Periscope. Uh, I watch oh, Periscope hey, and, man, uh, it says Chip, Chip in Norton on, on my uh, thing. It says you're calling from Oxfordshire. <laughs> oh, good well, for you. I, ha- I have I have a phone plan that I have a thousand minutes that I can call anywhere in the world. Oh, but, baby, baby, um, baby. So, I have I have a few questions about the show. Uh-oh, I will, I'll uh, do my best they, to answer, but I may not be able to. Go on, yes. By the way, Catherine is really awesome. Um, <laughs> now, when you say awesome... Well, I forgot your name, sorry. It's Marty. Marty, OK. When you say awesome, yeah. do you mean hot or an intelligent and funny um, um, co-host and producer? Yes. Excellent answer. Thanks, I like it. I think. OK, Marty, go on. What, what do you want to know? OK. And so, we're looking, we're looking uh, at and you. That was, and that was a compliment. Um, uh, as far as callers calling in, um, yep. do they need to be drunk? Or is that just, did that just happen? I don't know if we've had any drunk callers tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. Friday been, night we get them. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they've kind of all been straight tonight, I think, Marty. 
Also, is there a wiki for all the people that call in? Like, um, I know Nigel and I think Dennis, but I'm starting to learn the characters on the, well, the, the callers of the show. I don't know what a wiki is. Do you mean a Wikipedia page? You don't, do you? Yeah. You do? Uh-huh. Uh, on the callers? No, I don't, no, no, gosh, no, no. Okay, um, and also, I had a question as far as, um, uh, like, well, I think that would be a good idea for uh, for the listeners that um, don't know the history, especially of Nigel. I'm starting to get it that he's a little bit of a musician. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing. I don't. I, I know more about some callers than I do about others. But also, and I know that some people some people have, have heard some of the callers on other shows that I've done or other shows that other people have done. But I could, listen, man. There's no rush. There's no rush, Marty. I'm here for hopefully. I've got a two-year contract at least, right? I'm I'm happy if this is my final resting place. I will be very happy with that, actually. But I'm here for two years. There's no. It's only week four. There's no rush. Enjoy the journey. Well, uh, I so I'm enjoying it so far. But I do have I have, I have one last question. Go on. Um, I was listening to you talk about Katy Katy Perry. Yeah. And um, you. You, I, I'm older than you. I actually went to the internet and looked up and saw how old you were. Um, wow, uh, your you're... music tastes? Yeah. Jeez, um, how so? do I put this? Wow. Um, Gosh. It's like my parents listened to that. Right, and your parents had great taste. What's wrong with the Beach Boys? <laughs> or the Monkees. Yeah, well, yeah, well okay. You, t- you tell me any other bands that are touring to celebrate well, their 50th well, anniversary. Who? Who? Here's a, th- here's a thing, Marty. 19- yeah, they're, they're dead. One of them's dead. The 1967, the Monkees sold twice as many records as the Beatles. And the Rolling Stones put together. Boom. Boom. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I won that, didn't Some you? taste and... Um, don't always go together. No, you're right. You're but, right. They uh, don't always. But I'm, listen, I'm, one of, I, I'm a bit. I'm a big believer of if it works for you, man, it works for you. Well, my my question is, um, as far as um, your age, yeah. um, you are forty, right? For, well, yeah. Go. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Because when I saw your picture, I thought you were thirty, and when an I picture. started listening to you going on about picture. music, yes. I, I thought you were maybe fifty. Oh, but, um, but... So forty. I'm forty. I'm forty-two. You may have looked at an old picture. I am uh, getting a little bit fatter and a bit greyer, and I have a beard now. Do you do you do you, rem- do you remember Warrant uh, by any chance? Warrant. Yeah, the band Warrant from I don't, the eighties. I don't. I, I'm not really into eighties music. Called, no. Yeah, they had a song called Cherry Pie. Um, there also was a band called White Snake. I remember White Snake. And, uh, Toddy. Tawny, uh, Tawny Katane uh, dancing on top of a uh, car, sexually, explicitly, um, in that way. Oh, I, Cherry Pie, yeah, I'm I remember Cherry sure. Pie, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure that um, the MTV and sexualization is anything new. No, it's not new, but, but 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 as we get older, as as we kind of move through time and new pop stars come up, they always have to trump what the previous generation has done. So, yeah, you, I know I know the Cherry Pines, and, you know, and, and sexual songs and stuff and all of that. But the videos now, you have to admit, the videos now are way more sexual than the... I mean, I, I know this is a cliche, but um, Miley... Uh, the, who, the Hannah Montana, what was that? Yeah, Miley, Miley Cyrus. Cyrus. Uh, naked on a wrecking ball. I mean, guys, come on. We get it. And I know it's not her... But don't, don't you think that... Don't you think that you... I mean, does it does it does it hit any buttons when you when you kind of hear what you're saying and like hear your parents? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they were right. Maybe we need to listen to our parents more. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Are you a parent? Are you are you a dad? Are you a dad, Marty? Uh, my my son is 25. So. Well, hang on. How old are you? 38. <laughs> I'm older than you. I'm yeah. 48. 48. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Maybe you'd, maybe you'd think differently if you had girls. Um. Oh. I, no. No. You don't know. I I I, I kept no. I I, I kept a, a lid on my my kids. Um, yeah. Media watching when they were growing up. Give them a good whopping. Did you give them a good whopping? 
Did, you, did, did, no, did they? I just uh... marked everything down. Good, mm. good for you. Listen, Marty, I've got to go because we're, we're at the end of the show, mate. But All thanks right. for calling. All right. Speak thank again. You. Yeah. Take care. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. Look at that. You see. So, Wisconsin. Well, we, 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 that's exciting, isn't it? I mean, he's wrong on everything he was saying. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Thank you, Marty. I look forward to speaking to you again. Isn't it funny? The phone system here is so um, queer. It said he was calling from Oxfordshire. <laughs> Tipping Norton. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? <laughs> all English sounding plays you can find. Oh, man alive. Guys, that's it. Catherine, if you need to go and do the pod, I do. go, I'll go, 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 go. That's it, guys. That's your lot. Thank you very much for a Monday show. Um, that was a corker, actually. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you, John Ronson. Um, do go to johnronson.com or Amazon and look at his books because they're just, he's just such a good writer. Uh, go and get the best of uh, podcast, please. We'll be back Tuesday night, tonight at 10 o'clock. Id, thank you, mate. Talk radio. Join Guys. the talk nation. Pick up your phone and talk radio. Um, I'm really sorry about Periscope. I think it was them, although we are having problems with our internet here. It's really, really slow. I can actually do it. I've learned I can still impress my teenage daughter. I've learned that confidence um, is something you can get. Hang on, let me just get rid of this. Hang on a minute, guys. I'll, I'll, I will answer some questions in a minute if you've got any questions. Let me just get rid of... Uh, the most important thing you'll learn at the end of I always forget to... ...is what you're capable of. To find out right. more... Such any questions? Life-changing learning. Any questions? Uh, my offspring already bared, I'm afraid. I ain't having no more. Uh, OK, it was Periscope, was it? How do I think the show went tonight? It was okay. Um, it was, you know, we seem to, the, 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 even the shows that aren't that great seem to be quite a nice standard. I've got a cheese and onion sandwich and an apple in my car. Um, I don't want any more kids. I don't want any more kids. Fucking hell. Two and they're wonderful. Um, how's mum? Do you know, I've not spoken to her for a couple of weeks, actually. I need to go and sort out, so I've not had a vasectomy. I need to go and sort out some bank stuff for her, so I will... Um, I'm going to go and see her one day this week. Thank you for reminding me. It's very kind of you. Um, how do you think? Oh, Velvet's great. She's old now. She's 17 years old. She's an old lady. Um, let me just get uh, unplug stuff. I want to go home. Busy day tomorrow. Gonna see Kung Fu Panda three. Sky TV compatible box broadband speed required. New Sky Movies customers only. Nine extra month. Um. Standard price currently Any other questions? Do you like Rod, Jane and Freddy? And on no, um, I might do it. I might do it. You don't want to see my cat, do you, though? From the Sky News Centre at 1, the future of the British steel industry will be discussed by MPs in an emergency debate later. The Labour Party wants oh. clarity on the business secretary system. Would be right. prepared to co-invest in the Paul Tobin steelworks? I take, they leave so much rubbish in these studios. I'm taking my rubbish and some of everyone else's, but I'm not taking... I'll take everyone's rubbish. Guys, I really appreciate your continued support and your watching, and thank you so much. Um, I know I nicked the BBC headphones. They're good headphones. They weren't um, um, uh, limited. They put, they've put limiters on headphones now, so you can't have them too loud. I like them loud, which is why I'm going deaf, which is why I like them loud. Okay, guys.